Oh. <coughs> 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 <laughs> it's a Sunday morning, and I'm in uh, I'm in Wembley. Uh, not Wembley. Oh, well, actually, I mean I am more or less in Wembley. Uh, the fuse board, which I was going to do last night, I ended up doing uh, this morning just because I got to there. I got there at like five o'clock, and I was like, it's too late to be doing this. Um, anyway, it's now Sunday morning, so I'm now changing a fuse board, and uh, I've just been into uh, into McDonald's, and I've just uh, I got some breakfast because um, I didn't have time to make anything this morning, and. I I walked in, got my food, and I got this large coffee, right? Um, as it happens, I quite like McDonald's coffee, but anyway, I, I digress. The point is, I, I walked in with this little thermos, and I said to them when I ordered, I said, oh, can you just put my coffee in that? Because um, I'm not, a, I really, I'm starting to get this, I don't like disposable cups because they're just, they are so wasteful, you know? Um, so I just said, can you put it in this? Oh, uh, no, I can't do that, I'm afraid. <laughs> what, why? said it's just policy. I'm guessing basically it's health and safety because um, I'm guessing if they pour their coffee into this and then I this breaks or something and then I hurt myself I'll sue them or so I don't know. Uh, I was like fine whatever just give it to me like this. So yeah um, yeah anyway I was going to use that and I can't. This health and safety thing really has gone too far I think it's just you know, this fear of people suing each other because of something you might say or you or something that could happen that might it might never happen, but because there's a possibility it could happen, it just we're not allowed to, to do anything, you know? So anyway, I'm gonna finish this, I'll get to the fuse board and we'll uh, we'll catch up in a bit. Now that I've managed to find a GoPro battery with a little more than 10 minutes charge in it, I've got like half a dozen in the van, and uh, <laughs> they've all got literally, they're flat. If you leave them for uh, you know anything more than a week, they just self-discharge. And you, I mean, actually, these are all aftermarket batteries. I'm using Smart Smartry, that's one. Uh, they are crap, they are absolute pants. XC Source, they're pretty good. Those ones are all right, but they're both flat anyway. Um, but Smartry, that really is a bad, um, you charge it up and you put it in the GoPro and literally they, they discharge so quick you can actually see the digits counting down from 100 and you can just watch it and it'll stop at about sort of 75% and yeah they're really no good this thing of sort of aftermarket batteries is it's a, it's a real fallacy I keep getting sucked into it though because you see them and they're really cheap and you think ah oh, go on I'll give it a go and <laughs> it never pays off uh, you see, the customer up here was watching the channel and saw that I recommended this from Tool Station. This triple is so good, it's brilliant, I love it. It's, uh, so it's nice to see people actually sort of listening to what I'm saying. You shouldn't be encouraging it, la la la. Yeah, right. And with the smoke alarms here, I'm just uh, I'm doing it the same way I did it last time, where I'm just tapping it. I run it off the same breaker as the lighting circuit, the local lighting circuit. Um, that was a really controversial uh, topic. I was surprised how controversial that was. Um, to me, I thought it just made it just made good sense to do it, but um, it was a really sort of hot topic amongst some of you. That uh, some of you were saying that it's it's good practice and you should always do it, and you know, no exceptions. Um, for anybody who's just tuned in, I'm just talking about um, uh, running uh, interlinked smoke alarms off a local lighting circuit or whether you should use it on a dedicated breaker. Um, and it really caused a lot of controversy. Some people were saying that it's really good practice, others saying it's terrible practice. Um, and then some people were saying that oh, you shouldn't do it because you shouldn't have um, two, um, cir two independent circuits being fed off the same breaker, you know, yada, 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 and it just went on. But sorry, it's the way that I do it. I'm of the opinion that it's good practice, and I think everybody should do it that way. Because if the smoke alarms ever go wrong, it forces the client to have to get it fixed. This job actually is um, I'm just fitting the fuse board here, and uh, I'm fitting the fuse board and testing it, and that's it. But uh, the client here has done all the wiring. <laughs> I could. I can feel some of you sitting up in your armchairs right about now. You what? Yes, the customer's done it and I'm signing it off. 
very controversial. But uh, I mean, generally, as a rule of thumb, I tend, I tend not to, I tend not to do this exact thing where you fit the fuse board and then you sign it off afterwards. I tend not to do that because um, generally, when clients do electrical work, it's generally piss poor as a, as a rule of thumb. So I tend not to get too uh, too, too involved in it. I, I sort of just say oh, I'm a bit busy at the moment, a bit booked up, and that's the end of it. But. As it happens, uh, this guy is uh, seriously neat. It's uh, when I walked in, I was sort of expecting, you know, what it's like when when a customer's done the work and you're a bit apprehensive. But this is it's properly neat. It's uh, I'll show you around afterwards. It's a really neat job. So generally, I don't tend to, to sign off other people's work. I won't do it. But this client here, I made an exception because it was it was super neat. So. Yeah, I've kind of I've moved away from these BG boards. I was fitting loads of them at one point. Um, I've just got to the point that <laughs> just that last one you saw in a video the other day. Ah, that was the final straw. They're just that's only through you guys just saying you know branch out and try you know different brands and stuff. This test meter is dying slowly. I need to get a new one. No test leads. Good. We have a ring, 0.21. Um, that was the other thing, people were saying, how do you fill out your test results? I just use, um, I just use um, just a, a notepad and I just, I fill it out this way. So I just write everything down on a notepad. Although I was on Twitter the other day and somebody was saying there's a, an app called iCertify, which I've downloaded, but then you've got to pay a subscription. I just haven't got around to that bit yet. Yeah, I tend not to do work for, as a rule of thumb, for builders. Um, so like signing off work for builders, very, very seldom will I get involved in it. R2 is 0.38. Um, just because there are too many, um, too many hidden things you might not see, too many problems. And, and the biggest thing is money. They'll generally, not all builders, but I tend to find that they just, you know, they squeeze you for cash. and. You can't do a. You can't, I don't think you can do a job when you're being squeezed for cash. You just, you can't do it effectively. You can't be expected to operate effectively if you're being, you know, if you're being squeezed dry for cash. I know when I moved to London, I did some ringing around, um, trying to pick up a bit of business, and I rang must have been 20 local builders. Um, if you were prepared to work for sort of 150 a day, you could get work all day. For us, I mean, you could have an indefinite diary, but I wasn't prepared to do that because just I can't see how you can earn a living here on that sort of a wage. So I started at 200 a day, which was for that there was plentiful work. I, you know, working directly for clients, there was work plenty, so to speak, for that figure. Uh, and then I upped it to 250. Then, as a result of that, when you up your price, you lose some clients, but then you gain others. So it's. Um, very, you know, it's very hit and miss. 0.11, okay. Oh, that fire alarm quote as well. You know that uh, quote which which was on two videos back, I think it was? Um, my word, some of you take it very seriously. Um, I think some of you are asking questions like, can you please upload the PDF of the spe exact specification? I'm not fucking getting involved in it. It's just it's just a, a generalisation, you know. Um, we had a there was a fire survey that was done at that property, and there was numerous things like fire doors it needed and like the other bits and pieces. Uh, but one of the things it did need was a, a fire alarm system, um, and the spec was there. I can't remember off the top of my head what system it was there, but the spec was there in this in this thing. Um, but I'm not going to start, you know, for taking extracts of it because otherwise it will confuse everybody. Because um, don't forget, some people don't know, you know, some people just watch it for entertainment. It's not, so it's a balance of trying to give everybody a bit of what they want. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, you shouldn't strip twin and earth like that. Yeah, all right. I was in, uh, what was I? I was in Clapham the other day. And I was, uh, I was doing some work in Clapham, and there was another spark working in the street. Um, I actually, I was going to say, I won't say the name of the spark, but actually I can't remember him anyway. And I, I got, I, he recognised me, and I got speaking to him. 
And he was saying that his company, his the out the fleet that he you know, the company he's working for, he said he was on EICRs that day, just doing these EICRs. And he said they get given five a day to do. I don't I don't understand how you can do five ER, EICRs in a day. And when you think about it, the poor the poor son hasn't really got a choice. If he turns around and says, No, I'm not prepared to do that because you're just rushing it, all they'll do is they'll just find somebody else who can do it. So it's that it's that thing again of what do you do? I did feel I did feel for the position he was in. He wasn't happy about it, but like he said, you just end up putting visuals on stuff because you, you've got to work at such a pace. How do you? How are you supposed to do it? You know. And he said there's so many limitations. You know. I mean, the certificate isn't worth a damn. You might as well wipe your ass with it. It's not worth the paper it's written on. It's full of limitations and visual, visual. You know. How? But this is the thing. It's you know. This is the world we live in now. You know. I mean, the EICRs I do. I'd be lucky, in all honesty, if I win. If I do ten EICRs, I would be lucky if I, if I won, three of them. <laughs> Honestly, I'd be lucky if I won three, because when you price an EICR for, say, you know, three, four hundred quid, where it should be priced, you'll never get it because there'll all be, there'll be some oink who'll come in and do it for a hundred quid as a drive-by survey. So, you know, what, <laughs> what do you do? But I refuse to drop my price on them. I just I won't do it because EICRs are technical and they are time consuming and you need you need to take your time on them. Okay, MK, maybe a little t bit too much of this thread lock on these on these screws. Maybe you could ease up a little bit on it. Alright, I'm more or less finished in this board now. All I'm doing now is just filling in I've got two holes in the middle here. I'll pan the camera in so you can see. So that's the inside of the panel there. And actually those, it's those two there in the middle that I've just filled in. There you go, you can, you can just see them now. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go nuts with the stuff, but it's just uh, just a way of filling, just a way for, just to give it the fire integrity which it had to start with. I'll show you around, you can see what the customer's done. Because like I said, they've <laughs> done a surprisingly neat job. That's the only reason I took it on. Because like I said, I don't normally take on customer work, you know, work the customers have done themselves. I generally don't do it. Uh, but I took this one on because I was pleasantly surprised. But I'll take you upstairs now and I'll show you. All right, everybody. Um, I'm not a million miles off here. I'm almost done. I'm just going through doing one of the, I'm just doing a bit of final testing and stuff. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll show you onto the floor, actually, what they've done. I mean, in fact, I'll show you this first. Um, these, I mean, they've done all this. I, the guy here, he's, he's done all this himself. And... Uh, to be fair, it's it's a very neat job. It's uh, you know they've used thirty five mil boxes. We've got MK socket fronts, and it's very nicely done. Um, and it's like this yeah, all over the house. So it's very neatly done. It's a nice uh, it's a nice job. If the floor, I would I would probably have questioned it a bit more if the floor was down where you can't see any of the cabling. But here the floor is all open, so you've got full access to see everything that you want to see. So um, in fact, there's a little bit here I'll show you. You know, so it's very neatly done. The holes are halfway in the joists. It's all neatly bunched together. You know, it just, it just works. It's a nice setup. So personally, although I don't do this sort of thing every day, I don't mind it on this occasion. So, because um, this is a controversial thing, some people aren't comfortable doing it. Um, yeah, anyway, one thing I wanted to talk about was the downlights that they fitted here. Um, because I, when I saw them initially, I questioned whether they were fire rated downlights. And I've got the box here. Now these lights, they've just picked them up. And these are, I think from memory, he said these were 20 quid a box. So you get four in a box, okay? But they are fire rated downlights. But I'm, I'm struggling, I'm a little bit perplexed because I can't see what, where the fire rating on them is. Um, in fact, I've got a light here, I'll show you. Now this is actually one of them, this is one of the ones that, um, that has just come out of this box but as far as i can tell that basically looks like just a normal downlight i can't see where the fire rating part of that is i i can't see it it doesn't strike me as being fire rated that's basically just that's it that's all that comes with it but apparently what they're saying is that this glass is fire rated because it's, it's a piece of glass there and apparently that is uh that's enough to give it a fire rating approval but it's 30 60 and 90 minute fire rating and then you just put an LED lamp of your choice in there. I mean, it does say on the box there, LED only, max 10 watt. But just because it says LED, that doesn't mean someone's going to go, you know, 
I wouldn't have thought you could take that for gospel because somebody could just go behind and put a halogen in. So I don't, I don't know. Leave your comments below on what you think on that because I am I'm a bit perplexed on how that's acceptable. I don't know. Leave your thoughts below because that apparently is a fire rated downlight. But that's the, in fact, that's the, uh, that's the connector there which they've terminated. They've done a very neat job. Um, but this is literally, this is it. This is the... And that's what just bolts into the... That's just what bolts into the light fitting. So I'm... I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of it. I don't know. Just leave your comments below on what you think of it. Because I've never ever seen a fire rated downlight which hasn't got a, fire, a fireproof can above the ceiling. I don't, I don't see how that works. But... What do I know?